There are some people who think that we can have a hair transplant and we can harvest everything from the sides and back in order to get as much as possible on the top. And then they can be like, yeah, we can always come to Jay. He's going to pigment that. He's going to camouflage it, all the patches, over harvested spots. It's going to be covered. So why not over harvest? Why not go all in and just destroy the donor zone and then have it fixed magically by SMP? Is it true? Is it possible? I mean, it's interesting. It's such a, that's such a good question. And it's uh, a big, big misconception. And, I, you know, you're actually the second person that asked me that. Um, I was actually at a hair transplant clinic um, a few months ago. And um, one of the reasons why they wanted to get into SMP is for that reason. So they can like, push the donor area a little bit more to maybe nick out maybe another thousand grafts, you know. So um, they can actually, you know, compensate with the SMP. And within the donor area and my theory is when we fix FUE scars like why damage something to create something right that's my theory I mean you know if you're capable of taking 2,000 graphs just stick to those 2,000 graphs and you know um, go in for consultations with a few different um, doctors and get, and get a honest opinion about it because if you're completely deflating the back of the head See, with scars, right, I tell my clients one thing, and sometimes, you know, these clients, uh, you know, they'll keep their hair long around the sides and the back because of FUE and um, FUT scars sometimes. And I tell them one thing, I mean, with a, with, with actual scars, as an SMP artist is not responsible for getting rid of those scars. Let's just put that out there, right? we're responsible for making those scars look better okay sometimes you can pretty much get rid of them great if the tri normally if the hair is trimmed down to a zero because it's all two-dimensional right and obviously when the hair grows out it's pretty much covered anyway but the main issue is like getting that zero zero point five skin fade scars show up strip scar shows up fue scars show up so it's camouflaging those scars so, you know, if you can get like an 80-90% improvement, uh, you know, that's a winner. You know, sometimes you camouflage scars, you think, oh, where, where on earth has that strip scar gone? I can just about see it, you know. Uh, but I, I think that's a wrong mindset to have that, you know, you can completely deflate the back of the head um, and yes. just rely on an SMP yeah. artist to fix that. I think a lot of the botched FUE, the mega graft like the 5,000 grafts in one session you know those uh, those kind of um, I wouldn't mention any clinics but you know uh, international kind of hair transplant clinics that kind of you know uh, carry these procedures out I think they're, they're, they're very difficult to fix yeah. and um, you know uh, likewise if, if they've done that sometimes you've got you know cobalt stoning then you've got the irregular grafts and um, you know they look irregular the, sometimes the grafts are implied in lines and so on it's very difficult to fix that we can make it look better but it's definitely challenging. So having that mindset, hey, okay, let me just go cheap with my hair transplant or let me get a lot of grafts taken out or whatever and get SMP to fix it. No, wrong mindset. Because a lot of clients do come come into the clinic. They're like, you know what? Um, this SMP procedure will be the same cost as an FUE transplant done from Turkey. Why is it the same cost? Okay, let me just try this. And if it doesn't work, I'll get the SMP done. And... Little do they know, they've walked out worse off. Yeah, I mean, those 5,000 graft procedures, I always tell my, tell my subscribers, my clients, like, you can do this, but maybe 0.1% of the clinics in the world, they can do it, but the mm -hmm. rest, it's just danger zone. And this is the zone where most people end up in, because they are available, they are cheap, they, are, they can take you in next week or in two weeks. And that's the danger of that. That's yeah. probably the equivalent of doing all three SMP sessions in one session. Mm. No baby steps. Exactly. Yeah. Just going in with potluck. Which brings me also to another question. If somebody is offering SMP as a hair transplant practice or hair transplant clinic, they are telling the client, we can extract more hair. And if the client or if the patient says, hey, isn't it too much? Is, isn't 5,000 grafts going to damage my donor? And they're like, don't worry, you will have to SMP. We will do it right after the surgery, 
right after the maybe on the day the day second day wow. and they will mask it they will try to camouflage it and and there are clinics like that where i heard that this is being still done is that actually happening yeah yeah that's yeah. shocking yeah that yeah, is yeah. shocking first thing first you know you can't take any risks with smp i mean if they've if that client's just gone through surgery and you're applying smp straight after that that's going to go terribly wrong mm. let me just highlight that right you know, it's all fair and well um, hair transplant doctors or hair transplant clinics doing SMP. If the results are great, you know, go for it. But um, straight after the procedure, uh, if you're listening to this podcast, do yourself a favor and mm. just just don't 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 go ahead with that. Yeah, yeah. Speaking about the donor now, like the yeah. donor is red. There are many like thousands of holes there, and uh, they they want to avoid one thing they know it's going to look over harvested they know it's going to look patchy once it grows maybe six months later so their strategy is to put some dots there so maybe it's going to look a little bit better but it's super dangerous it yeah, could be like increase the chance of infection it's, it's, uh, it's crazy. scary yeah it's yeah. a good job you're listening to this podcast <laughs> yeah 